In this video, we are going to talk about how to solve polynomial equations. In chapter 6, the equations we solve by factoring are all going to be able to be factored. Then we're going to go to chapter 9 later in this class, and we'll learn how to solve equations that can't be factored. So again, in this section, we're going to focus on the ones that can be factored. So the steps for solving a polynomial equation is you're going to first make sure the equation is equal to zero. So if you look at example number one, you can see that we can skip step one because it already equals zero. The second step is we are going to factor the polynomial. So if we took a, take a look at example one, there are one, two, three three terms. So we're going to use the steps that we learned in section 6.6 .6 in this class to factor the left side of this equation. So when we factor, the very first step is to see if there's a GCF. There's something that goes into all the terms. And in this problem here, there is no GCF. So then what we do is we make the rainbow. We take A, which is 1, times c, which is negative 12, and we have to think of what multiplies to negative 12 and adds to 1. So feel free to pause this video and try to figure out what two numbers we should pick. So we know that since it has to add 1, we know that the bigger number in the pair has to be positive. It always matches this sign right here. So this has to be positive, this has to be positive, and this has to be positive. And since it has to multiply to a negative, we know when we multiply, one of them has to be negative and one of them has to be positive. So now we're going to add these and see which ones would make positive 1, and that would be negative 3 and 4. Now, since the number in the front is 1, all we have to do, so we're going to put x here and x here, and then we're going to drop these two numbers into the parentheses, so negative 3 and 4. And since this is a positive 1, this can't be simplified here. Okay, so that was step 2. We factored the problem. Then step 3 is we're going to set each of these factors equal to zero. So we're going to take x minus 3 and set it equal to zero and x plus 4 and set it equal to zero and then we're going to solve each of them. So we're going to add 3 to both sides here and we would get one solution which is x equals 3 and then we're going to subtract 4 on both sides here and get x equals negative 4. Now if we want to check our solution. I loved this topic back when I was in school because I could always take the original problem I was given and I could quickly plug the number I got in for x and it doesn't take that long if I just use a calculator real quick. So if I do 3 squared plus 3 minus 12, if this answer here is correct, then it should say 0. So then I'm like, cool, I know I got this one right. So then I would do it again, and then I would plug in negative 4 instead. So I would have negative 4 squared plus negative 4 minus 12. And I would get 0. So that's how I know these steps here work for solving polynomial equations. Now I want to talk about why the equation has to equal 0 and why we set both of these equal to zero. So it boils down to a concept that you learned when you were probably in elementary school, and that is when you multiply two things together, two numbers together, no matter what number the first number is, in order to get two numbers to multiply to zero, it doesn't matter what this is as long as one of them is zero. So any number, so if I put a six here, and I do six times zero, no matter what, it's always zero. So that is why we want to have it equal to zero, because when it equals to zero, then we know one of these numbers. So remember, 
x represents a number and when you subtract 3 this is a number right here when this is equal to 0 no matter what this parentheses value is it will always equal 0 because this says two things are being multiplied so that is why we set each of them equal to 0 and why we want to make sure that it's equal to 0 here in our first step before we begin. So to solve polynomial equations, one way is to factor it. In chapter 9, we'll learn other methods. And another way to solve is by graphing. So if we had either graph paper and we were to graph this, you know, we could make a table. We could plug numbers in for x, and then we could plot our points here, and we make this beautiful graph. And so if our answers are 3 and negative 4, if you look at, here's the x-axis, when x equals 3, so here's 3 right here, and when x equals negative 4, you could see it's the points where the graph crosses the x-axis. So if you're allowed a graphing calculator, or you wanted to make a graph, the answers to these are always where the graph crosses the x-axis. So making a graph takes a long time unless you have a graphing calculator. So I recommend um, using the site desmos.com and this is an online graphing calculator and you could type this in and hit graph and then you can check your answers that way. Now you can't do that on a test, so the way to check it on a test would be to plug them in and make sure it equals zero when you're done or it equals whatever the given problem was. Now the other thing to note is that the degree of the problem, so remember degree is always what is the highest exponent, is how many solutions you could have at most, so the maximum number. So since this exponent was a two, you could have up to two answers. So you could have no answers, one answers, or two. So you can't have more than this many solutions. So if the highest exponent's four, you could have up to four answers. Okay, so let's try another example here. So the very first step, we're gonna skip because it already equals zero. So we're good on that. Step two is we are going to factor this. It says factor. So when you're factoring that F word, the very first step when you factor is always see if there is a GCF, something they have in common. Well, I know that five can go into both of these, so five, and they both have X's in their term. So the GCF is five X. So 5x times x, when I distribute here, would get me 5x squared. And then 5x times negative 2, 5x times negative 2 would get me negative 10x. Then if I look here, the exponent here is a 1, so I can't go any further in factoring this any further. So now step two is done. I factored it completely. Then step three is you set each factor. Now remember what a factor is. A factor is um, what you have in parentheses or what you have in front of the parentheses. So you're gonna take each of these and you're gonna set them equal to zero. So we're gonna take five X equal to zero and then X minus two equal to zero. And then we're going to divide by 5 here. Anything to, or 0 divided by anything is just 0. So that's one of the answers is 0. And then over here, we'll get x equals 2 for a solution. Now, if I plug both of these numbers in for x, it will make 0. On a graph, remember when I um, graph this equation right here. If I go to x and I go to 2, it's on the x-axis. And if I go to 0, it's on this x-axis. So that's how you could solve by graphing is to graph the problem and just find where it crosses the x-axis. So this is the algebraic way to do it, which is how you will do it on your um, exams and such. 
But next semester, when you're allowed a graphing calculator in your class, most likely, you can just graph it if they don't ask you to do it algebraically and just find those x values right there. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at example three. So the very first step is it needs to equal zero. So step one, it needs to equal zero. So first thing I'm going to do here is this is factored. This is a multiplication problem, but it doesn't equal zero. So I can't set each of these equal to negative five. So that is why I'm going to have to do a little extra work here and unfactor this by multiplying. So 4y times y is 4y squared. And then 4y times negative 3, that would make negative 12y. And now i got to make it equal 0. So I'm going to go ahead and add 5 to both sides. And then I would have 4y squared minus 12y plus 5 equal to 0. So that was all step 1, is make it equal to 0. Now step two is we need to factor this problem. So when we do the F word, when we factor, we always look for a GCF. Is there something that divides all the terms? So in this problem, no. So then you ask yourself how many terms? One, two, three. When there are three terms, we use the AC method. So we multiply A and C. So when we multiply 4 times 5, we get 20. So we have to find what multiplies to 20. And it has to add to this term here. So it has to add to negative 12. So go ahead and pause the video and find what two numbers multiply to 20 and add to negative 12. And since it has to add to a negative, we know that the bigger number, so what I mean by that is 20 is bigger than 1, has to be the negative. But it has to multiply to a positive. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. So that's how I know they both have to be negative. And when we add them, these two would add to negative 12. So if you remember from when we learned how to factor trinomials where there's a number in front here, there are two different ways to go about this. So I'll review both ways because I know that uh, there's more than one way to do math problems and everyone has a different preference. So the way that I do it is I take this, the 4 and the y, and I put it here and here. And then I take these two numbers and put them here and here. And then I ask myself, what divides both of these? And the answer is 2. So then it becomes 2y minus 1. And then over here, 2 goes into both of these. So then it becomes 2y minus 5. And the reason why that works is because we put an extra factor of 4 here, because 4 times 4 is 16 not 4, but then we're essentially dividing out that extra factor of 4 because 2 times 2 is that extra 4 I put. Okay, so then the other way to factor it is to get rid of this and replace it with these two numbers here. So replace it with negative 2y and negative 10y because negative 2y and negative 10y is negative 12y. And now instead of having three terms, there are four terms, and then we would group them. So we've learned in this class in section 6.5, when we have one, two, three, four terms, we group them. So you find the GCF over here, which is 2y. And then 2y times 2y is 4y squared. And then 2y times negative 1 would make negative 2y. And then over here, I'm going to bring down this negative here. They both, 5 can go into both of these. So negative 5 times 2y is negative 10y. And a negative times a negative is a positive 1. And then these should match. 
So when these match right here, they have that in common. So 2y minus 1. And then we put these two together. And it doesn't matter which if it goes in front or behind. So I'm going to put 2y minus 5 here. So you could see that we have the exact same factoring. Either method you decide is easier for you, doesn't matter to me, we get to the same point here. So then once we're at the same point here, the next thing we do is we take each of these parentheses and we set them equal to zero. So each factor, 2y minus 1 equals to zero and 2y minus 5 equals to zero. And then we solve this. So we're going to add 1 to both sides here. Then divide by 2. And we get y equals 1 half. Or as a decimal, 0.5. And then here we're going to add 5 to both sides. Then divide by 2. And we get y equals 5 halves. Or... That's the same thing as 2.5. Now if we go to so now if we go to desmos.com and we type in, I put x instead of y, um, so that way usually when we solve an equation there's x's, so I just put x in, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I typed in the equation here and I'm going to ask graph. So if we go to where it crosses the x-axis, you can see that when it's set equal to zero, we can just find where it crosses the x-axis, and you can see the 0.5, which is one of the answers we got, and then 2.5. It matches our graph here. So this graph right here, if we zoom in to where it crosses the x-axis, those are our solutions. Alrighty, so if we take a look at example four here, the very first step is we want the equation to equal 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 16 to both sides. So then we have 2x squared plus 12x plus 16 equals 0. Now there's two different ways to continue this problem, so I'll talk about both ways. Um, but when you solve an equation, we've talked about in this class, or hopefully you've talked about it when you took taken an algebra class, that if there's a number that goes into all of them, that you could divide everything in the problem by it if there is a number that goes into all of them. So one way you could do this is divide everything by 2, everything, the whole thing, and then you're left with x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. And then you would just continue from there. The other way to do it is to start with factoring, and the GCF is 2, so you'd put the 2 in front. 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times 6x is 12x, and 2 times 8 is 16. So then if I continue, you can see that this part is still the same over here. Now there's this 2 in the front here, but when you set this equal to 0, there's no x here. So this is not helping us get a solution, so that's why it's okay to do this here and not put the 2 in the front. Because I'm, it's an equation, and whatever I do to all of them, it's okay. So I can continue either way and still get the correct answer here. So if I factor this, I have to think of what multiplies to 8. So it has to multiply to 8, and it has to add to this number here, 6. So you can go ahead and pause the video and see if you can come up with those two numbers. Since it has to add to a positive, I know the bigger number is positive. But it has to multiply to a positive, so they're both positive. And 2 and 4 would add to 6. So then I'm going to have an x here and an x here. And I'm going to put my 2 and my 4 in. Now if I do it this way, I'm going to have the same thing, except for I'm going to have this 2 here. Okay, so then the next step is I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. So I'm going to have x plus 2 equal to 0 and x plus 4 equal to 0. And then I'm going to solve for x, and I would get x equals negative 2. 
and x equals negative 4 as my solutions. Now if you have this way, you're going to set each of these equal to 0, and as you could see, like I said before, there's no x to solve for, so that gets ignored. And then when you set both of these equal to 0, you're going to get the same answers we got here. And then if we take it to the graphing calculator and we uh, type in when the equation equal to 0, so 2x squared plus 12x plus 16, and then I go and graph it, if we check it here, it crosses at negative 2, and that was one of our solutions, and it crosses here at negative 4, and that was one of our other solutions. Okay, so if we take a look at example 5, when I look at this problem, I'm like, oh, it has fractions. I don't like that. So at the beginning of this class, we learned a method for getting rid of denominators. So what you do is you take a look at the denominator. Here we have a 4, and here we have a 2. And we have to think of what number can 4 and 2 both divide into. So for example, 8, they both go into 8 evenly. Um, 16 would work. They both go into 16. 24 would work. 20 would work. But the smallest number, I like to use the smallest number, and they both go into 4. So that's how I know I'm going to multiply everything in this problem by 4. And I know that I'm allowed to multiply everything by uh, whatever number, as long as I do it to all of them. So the reason why this shouldn't be difficult is because if you know how to multiply fractions, this number here, if you think of this as 4 over 1, this number and this number, these divide out here. They become 1s because 4 goes into 4 once. And then you're just left with 3x squared, so there's no fraction there now. And then 2 goes into 4 twice, and then you just have 2 times 5 here. And then 4 times 2 is 8. And then 0 times 4 is 0. And now I'd much rather solve that equation than the one with the fractions. So if fractions, if you're worried about fractions, again, it should not be difficult. You have a calculator in this class, so you just do 3 fourths times that 4, and as you can see, it comes out to be 3. And then you have negative 5 halves here times that 4. You could see we get the negative 10. Here we have 4 times 2. That's 8. 0 times 4. That's 0. But it should be easily um, should be done easily without a calculator because we picked that number such that the denominators go into it. All right, so now when we solve an equation, polynomial equation, it has to equal zero if we're going to solve it by factoring. So then what we do is how many terms? There's no GCF here. There's one, two, three terms. So I'm going to make the rainbow here. And 3 times 8 is 24. So we have to think of what multiplies to 24. And it has to add to negative 10. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find those numbers. So since it has to add to a negative, I know the bigger number has to be the negative. And it has to multiply to a positive number, so I know a negative times a negative. So that's how I know both of them should be negative. And then I add them, add, add, add all of these, and I see that negative 4 plus negative 6 adds to negative 10, and they multiply to a positive 24. So that's how I know to use those two numbers. So then remember, when you're factoring a trinomial, there are two different methods to do that. So I'm going to review both of those methods here. One way is to get rid of this negative 10 and put negative 4x minus 6x. And now it's a polynomial with four terms. Now there's one, two, three, four. So I went from three terms to now four terms and I can continue solving it from there. Or the way that I do it instead of that way, and do it, of course you would do that one by grouping, is I take this 3x and I put it here, and I put it here, 
and then I put the negative 4 in and the negative 6 in. And then I ask myself, what divides both of these? Nothing but 1, so I bring it down. And then what divides both of these is 3. So then it would become x minus 2. And then before I keep going, because what if I did something wrong, I'm just going to check these. I'm going to make sure that 3 times 1 gets me this number. And then negative 4 times negative 2 gets me this number. This doesn't mean this is right. It just means at least do a quick check to see if that works. If you want to know 100% you're right, you got to foil this out and make sure it gets you this. That's how you'll know you factor correctly. Okay, so then once it's factored, you set each of these equal to 0. So we would have 3x minus 4 equal to 0 and x minus 2 equal to 0. So then we would add 4 to both sides here and then divide by 3 and we would get x equals 4 thirds or if you write it as an improper fraction 1 and 1 third you cannot leave this as a decimal because if I do 4 divided by 3 it's a repeating decimal. So when it's a repeating decimal can't leave it as a decimal or solution without rounding and this problem does not say to round. So one of these would be our solution. And then here we'll add 2 to both sides, and we get x equals 2. And now if we go to Desmos and we type in our problem, and then we go and hit graphing calculator. I'm going to zoom in here. And if I touch where it crosses the x-axis, you could see here that we would get 1.3333. It won't write it as a decimal. But that's what our calculator said when we did 4 divided by 3, or we wrote it as a decimal. Now over here we get 2, and that was the other solution we got. So it matches. A quick way to check, again, is to graph it. Alrighty, let's try this one out here. So when we're solving polynomial equations, it has to equal 0, which it does. So then we're going to factor here, and when we factor the first thing we do is look for something they have in common and they both have an x in common and then x times x is x squared and x times negative 4 is negative 4x so this would multiply to make this okay then if we look inside the parentheses the exponents a 1 so we know we're done there's nothing else we could do here so then we set each of these factors equal to 0 so we would have x equals 0 and then x minus 4 equals 0. So we have one answer here, and here we're going to add 4 to both sides, and we get x equals 4. So just to remind you, whatever the highest exponent is tells you at most you could have two answers, and as you could see here, we got two answers here. And then if we, again, go to our graphing calculator, we type in our, our equation when it equals to 0. And then you could see it crosses here at 0, so that was one of our solutions. And then it crosses here at 4, which was our other solution. Okay, so if we take a look at example 7, first of all, when we're solving an equation, it has to equal 0. Another thought is if the highest exponent in the problem is 3, that we could have up to 3 solutions. So most likely we're going to get three solutions when we solve this problem here. So first of all, I want to make it equal zero. Now I could either get rid of these and move them over here or make this side equal zero and get rid of these. So the best way to do it is wherever the highest exponent is, you're going to leave this side alone here. So that is why I'm going to do minus 9x here to make that go away and then minus 18 to make this go away. And then you can't do anything over here because none of these match. None of these are like terms. So I'm going to have x cubed plus, whoops, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9x minus 18 equals 0. Okay, then you look for a GCF. So there's nothing that goes into all of these. But there's one, two, three, four terms. And when there's four terms, you're going to group them. Put two of them together and two of them together. And then you're going to look for a GCF here. What goes into both of these? They both have x squared in common. So then x squared times x would make x cubed. 
and x squared times 2 would make 2x squared. Now over here, I'm going to bring down the negative, and 9 goes into both of these. And negative 9 times x is negative 9x, and a negative times a positive is a negative, and negative 9 times positive 2 would make negative 18. Then what we're going to do is they both should have these in common if I did this correctly, which they do. So I'm going to bring that down, since it's the GCF of these two. And then I'm going to put the x squared and the minus 9 together. Now the exponent here is 1. So there's definitely nothing I can do to keep factoring this, but this over here is a 2. So I'm going to see if I could factor this further. So we learned in this class when there's two terms, one way to try to factor it is, is there anything times itself that makes x squared? And is there anything times itself that makes 9? So since such numbers can be found, I'm going to have x and x, so this is a difference of squares, and then I'm going to have one of them be positive 3 and one of them be negative 3, and then I'm going to bring down this x plus 2. So the highest exponent was a 3, and you could see we have three factors, and then we're going to set each of these factors equal to 0. So I'm going to go over here and do that, so I'm going to have x plus 2 equal to 0, x plus 3 equal to 0, and x minus 3 equal to 0. And then we're going to solve these, and we're going to find one solution is negative 2, another solution here is negative 3, and our third solution is 3. So again, whatever the highest exponent is in the problem tells us at most we can have three solutions. So if we type in our equation when it equals 0 into the graphing calculator and find where the graph crosses the x-axis, we could see that one solution here is negative 2. It crosses here at negative 2. And then over here, it crosses at negative 3. And then over here, it crosses at positive 3. Alrighty, let's go ahead and look at this one here. So when we're solving an equation, the exponent tells us at most how many solutions. So we could have up to two solutions here. And then it has to equal zero, which it does. Great. And then we factor. So there is no GCF. Nothing can go into both of these. There are two terms. When there's two terms, we ask ourselves, what times itself? makes the first term. There has to be a minus for that. And then 3 times 3 is 9. So then what we do is we have 2x and 2x. And then we have the positive 3 and we have a negative 3. And then what we do when it's factored is we set each of these equal to 0. So 2x plus 3 equal to 0 and 2x minus 3 equal to 0. And then we solve the equation for x. And we would get x equals negative 3 halves, or if you wrote it as a decimal, negative 1.5. So that's one answer. And then over here, we get positive 3 halves or 1.5, if you wrote it as a decimal. So if we put it in our graphing calculator, it was 4x squared minus 9 equals 0. And if we go look where it crosses the x-axis, you could see it hits at negative 1.5, which that was one of our solutions. And then it hits here at 1.5. So on an exam in this class, you wouldn't have a graphing calculator. So instead, if you want to check your answer, so let's say I wanted to know if this answer here was correct, if three halves was correct, you'd plug it back in. And if I didn't ask you to show your work, you could just type this in your calculator and you could do four and then three halves squared minus nine. And if it equals this number over here, then we would know it is correct.
And you would do that for both of the answers or however many answers you have.